AI and its impact in the field of education. You know, as, as, as we know, AI you know, is, is an area which has got a lot of interest in the recent times. And you know, a large number of use cases, a large number of, of, of enabling you know, architectures are being designed around that. And, and so why is that? Uh, AI is broadly known as a class of technologies called general purpose technologies which means that, which, which is the same category as electricity or information technology, right? which, is, which, is, which means that it's transforming not just one sector or some sectors, but actually all sectors and all facets of, of, of life. It's also very important to talk about this area, AI in education today, because India is a, a services powerhouse of the, of the world. And education is the field that powers the services powerhouse. Uh, and so for, for, for our own growth, for, for the growth of the services powerhouse, it's extremely important for us to look at what are the next steps, what, where is this area headed. And lastly, I think uh, for those of us who are parents, I think it's an, important, it's an extremely important area to talk about because it's something which directly impacts the future of our children and, and, and the future of our, our, of our nation in that sense. So hence, I think it's, it's very clear that AI in education and how it's going to shape the education sector is a very important area to focus on. So we, if, we, if, we, if we look at what is this game changer doing over the past few years and, and you know, how is it really changing the game? I think, you know, I'll, I'll go back to some of the earliest use cases of AI, which is uh, Use cases like finding plagiarized, you know, assignments or, or homework, right? You know, we, we, we know about this for, uh, for for a very long time, but I think this was probably one of the earliest, most basic use cases of AI, right? From there on, we moved on to more evolved use cases like uh, testing and assessments, and how can these be become these be made more dynamic and more intelligence driven, right? So. And, and I think a fair amount of work has been done in that area and we are headed progressively towards that. And I think the day is not far where not just the, uh, uh, the answers, but also, uh, uh, you know, what the interaction data, which is things like how much time it took to give the answer, how, what, was there an overwrite or not, etc., etc. A lot of interaction data would also start becoming a part of, of how, you know, uh, the, the responses are evaluated. Coming on to more recent times, I think the cutting edge today is really, you know, creating customized learning roadmaps, creating customized, uh, 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 you know, learning uh, uh, for for students based on their own aptitudes, based on their own skills, and where they are at this point in time. I think this is the area to compete on right now, and a lot of you know successful startups are there in India and also around the world, and this is truly the cutting edge right now where. You know, as, as, as practitioners, as, as professionals in the field, we need to think about how uh, we can make more customized learning roadmaps for the students and for, for, for the people who want to, want to uh, uh, gain learning. I think the, the fun part with data is that, you know, you can always imagine how the story is going to, going to unfold in the future and what kind of possibilities exist. And so you can easily imagine that if things are going in a particular way right now, you can start gathering long-term data on educational outcomes. And so, you know, a test outcome versus an outcome in the, in the, in the area of education, which is what could be the edu in educational outcomes. And that can be also correlated with professional outcomes. So test to educational outcomes to professional outcomes. And there you can have more long-term data coming in and essentially, you know, giving more customized career advice or advice on what kind of professions might make sense, what might not make sense, etc. And, and, and really have a very uh, customized experience for the, 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 for, for, for the children, for the students, and for, for the people who, 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 who want to gain from this practice. So I think that's where the field is headed. And, you know, so, uh, uh, and, and again, it's on all of us, you know, to make it real, to make it, you know, come to life, because, you know, a lot of, it's, it's a very high stakes game. Uh, but this kind of customized education is where we are headed, and so that if, if 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 I think about it, uh, you know, you can you can easily you know predict who's going to be a chemical engineer, who's going to be a, a, a you know a, a somebody who, who mentioned about a type professional diver, etc. So that's 
overall how the field is evolving. So, do we think that you know uh, if it's going to such customized roadmaps, such customized outcomes, everything is hunky dory and you know it's all roses and sunshine from here? I think there are a few cautions which need to be thrown into the mix here. The first part is really about, uh, uh, and, and my previous speaker did, did mention about that, which is uh, how does all of this lead to, you know, what does it mean for the people who are in the professions today? So instead of learning, uh, instead of jobs being, you know, generated because what you know, jobs are likely to be given out based more based on uh, what's your flexibility, what's the mental agility, and what's the ability to learn new and new skills. Because it's entirely possible that you know if you've been training to do a job for five years, by the end of those five years are over, you know the job is already gone. So how does one build in more flexibility in the curriculum and focus not more on what you know, but actually what you how you can solve problems and how you can you know uh, 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 generate solutions. That's, that's going to be a more critical uh, facet of how education is going to evolve. And the second part about AI is that it's, it's, it's a very powerful force, but it's a unidirectional force. AI is extremely good in solving problems, right? In banking, we solve problems like, you know, uh, uh, providing best customer experience, finding out the most relevant offers, you know, in various areas of AI, you know, the, the, the very cutting edge problems are being solved, but it's a very unidirectional force, right? And we know the you know the the, 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 the mystique and, and uh, the, the mystery of human mind. I don't think you know uh, human mind falls into any one bucket. Right? There are as many different types of ways of learning, many different ways of of, of, of uh, uh, you know uh, gathering intelligence by the human mind. And so, one thing that we need to be careful about is in our you know efforts in our in our efforts to get unidirectional excellence. We should not lose anyone behind, and or worse still, lose any class of people behind as we go more and more towards targeted educational outcomes. So I think you know that's 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 the caution that I would like to throw into the picture. But you know that said, you know AI is here, AI is very real, and AI is here to stay. Uh, AI is a general purpose technology, so which means that it's definitely shaping educational outcomes here in India and across the world, and we definitely owe it not just to us, but also to our future generations to make sure that you know, we, we, we provide this, these, these kind of technologies to, to be able to shape their you know, educational outcomes. Thanks a lot.